Queen Noor of Jordan is in Boston this evening to be honored for her effort to ban landmines. She's an American beauty who reigned as queen for more than two decades until the death of her husband, King Hussein, in February. I met with the queen this afternoon at the Ritz-Carlton. Her husband may have lost his valiant fight against cancer, but she says he remains with her every day, spiritually. Um, and I still feel that we're working. That's that nice. he's with me and, and uh, that we are continuing on together. Queen Noor of Jordan has been a widow only four months. She continues to live in her palace and carries forward with most of the public responsibilities as before. But she and her four children miss the king very much. It has been a challenging year. They've been very, very brave. We have uh, tried to get on with what assuming our responsibilities, fulfilling them, and now I hope we'll have some time together. Because she spent most of her life with her husband in Jordan, she welcomes the opportunities to be with her children, who are being educated here in the United States, for a special reason. The awareness and understanding of learning disabilities, which uh, run in, in, in our family, and uh, our children have benefited from schools here that have remedial support that has enabled them to continue on their education without any interruption or, or any um, real obstacles in their way. The American board queen was educated at Concord Academy and Princeton University before she married the king 21 years ago. She was 26, he 42. She takes issue with the American stereotyping of Arabic women as being submissive. It's so hard for, because of the stereotyping, yeah. because of the um, the, the fact that the, our region and culture is not well understood in the West. It's so hard for uh, people in the West to imagine that um, my life, that leaving here and moving there would not have been a, an enormous compromise. It's a transitional time for you. You were the Queen of Jordan for the last 20 some years. You're no longer the Queen of Jordan. Um, what is your official role there now? Well, I am Queen Noor of Jordan, <laughs> and that is unchanged. And Did I, you I, my my work is pretty much the same. I, I, it's not changed substantially because it's not a the, the role is not an official role. It's really an individual role, and I um, d developed it and and. Uh, in, in relation to my own personal interests. One of which is working with the international effort to ban landmines, an issue that hits home, especially for people in her part of the world. We have an urgent need in our region. We have perhaps uh, half the, the landmines mm -hmm. in place in, throughout the world that go back to World War um, II and, and are still killing men, women, and children on a daily basis in countries like Egypt and, and others in North Africa. When I asked her if she thinks of herself as a Jordanian or an American, she asked, I see myself as a Jordanian and a citizen of the world, and my responsibilities are to my country and the world. Tonight, Queen Noor will walk with school children to the Bostick Public Garden to show support for her anti-landmine campaign, and tomorrow she heads on to Washington to attend the high school graduation of one of her sons. When New Center 5 continues, David Brown has a preview of what we can expect from, in terms of the weather this weekend. And the National Spelling Bee Champion is That's New Light on a special night in Boston. And this 14 Noor of Jordan, widow of King Hussein, received the Children's Champion Award from UNICEF for her work to eradicate landmines that kill so many children around the world. Queen Noor led a group of children through the public garden in Boston, a symbolic effort to call attention to those maimed and killed by landmines. New Center 5 Steve Sprasia is with the Royal Entourage. And following that, Ladley, she ended up here at the Ritz-Carlton Hotel for a private and a very elegant fundraising dinner to raise landmine awareness. But elegant fundraising dinners are not what the queen gravitates to. This American-born queen is more concerned with children, children and others who are victims of landmines. She walked with the children tonight. It was a walk for those who can't walk. A walk for children who've been killed or maimed by landmines. We have an urgent need in our region. It's an issue close to Her Majesty. As the Queen has found out, more than half the landmines on the planet are in her part of the world. Mines that were laid in World War II, let alone the mines for more recent conflicts in the region, and are still killing men, women, and children on a daily basis. Tonight, she stopped during her walk to remember those children who were victims of landmines.
Proudly taping the event, Diana McLouf, a Jordanian American whose son was one of those who presented the queen with the flowers that she tossed off the bridge. It's really special to be a part of this. And this is such a good cause. It's a wonderful cause and I think um, we as Jordanians are very proud of the work that she is doing and uh, want to promote and hopes that she continues to promote the charity work that she is doing. The Queen also watched a dance of peace performed for her by the West Roxbury High School dancers. Afterward, she said she was humbled by the reception she received here in Boston. But it just gives us all a great deal of encouragement and hope for those of us who are concerned about landmines and children and who also want to instill a sense of activism and solidarity among young people everywhere in the world with each other. And the Queen's visit is not a one-stop fundraising effort. Once she leaves town, UNICEF will begin the second phase of its fundraising efforts to raise landmine awareness. Reporting live, I'm Steve Sprazier, News Center 5 tonight. Chet? All right, Steve. Travels to Boston. Boston for a big honor. Those stories and more. Continues her high-level visit to Boston tonight, where she led her children's walk against landmines. Hundreds of people, many of them local children, showed up at Boston's Public Garden to greet the Queen, who was born in America. Ridding the world of landmines was also a cause near and dear to the heart of the late Princess Diana. Tonight's event is part of UNICEF New England's new campaign against landmines in Africa. Well, it's Boston with a, a very important mission. Her Majesty is in uh, the city to raise money and awareness in a crusade to wipe out landmines. Before benefit dinner this evening, she watched a local dance troupe's performance in the public garden. Queen Noor is the widow of the late King Hussein, who died of cancer in February. Campaign to rid the world of landmines. In Boston tonight, she's being honored for that effort. New England Cable News reporter Greg Wayland joins us with the story. Greg, good evening. Good evening, R.D. The Queen was here at the Ritz-Carlton and also at the Four Seasons Hotel to receive the UNICEF New England Children's Champion Award, primarily for her work against landmines. Now, since she married the King 21 years ago, the Queen has been involved with a number of international causes to promote the interests of children and women. This is her latest and perhaps her most important. And tonight in Boston, she participated in what was called a ceremony of hope and remembrance. In the sultry city heat, in the crush of cameras and admirers, she walked serenely through Boston's premier flower garden, the public garden. This was the beginning of the children's walk against landmines. At the center of the garden, she paused on the central footbridge. While being serenaded by guitars and children's voices, she released a bouquet of lilies into the swan pond below, a symbolic act in remembrance of those who have been killed or injured by landmines. Eventually, she would walk on to greet the dozens of Boston-area children who had waited to greet her. Thank you. I hope this is just the beginning for you all. What are those little flags about? They just gave this to them to, like, wave. Yeah, yeah. to wave. I think they're and for she to can show, sign. like, with the countries that um, they put the landmines in. That's I think this is where yeah. that she's helping. I think this is to show, like, that, like, these are the countries that they're trying to stop, like, to, from putting yeah. the landmines in. The battle to locate and remove landmines and end the maiming and killing that they cause is rapidly becoming an international cause celeb, due in part to the influence of the late Princess Diana of England. In an earlier news conference, it became plain that Queen Noor is rapidly becoming the new international point person for that cause. And it was obvious that she was concerned about the failure of the United States to fully endorse that cause. Today, the United States is one of the 16 remaining countries that actually produce mines. 38 countries that were key producers have banned it now, have, have given, um, uh, have committed not to, to produce any longer. And the United States has a current export ban, uh, though it has, um, it has not committed to, um, uh, to stop production yet. Worldwide, the Queen faces a daunting task. According to UNICEF, it costs only three to ten dollars to make a landmine, three hundred to a thousand to remove one. The agency says that since 1975, there have been one million non-combatant casualties due to landmines, 800 per month, 30 percent of the victims under 15. The Queen acknowledges that the U.S. is funding victim assistance and mine removal expertise. There are also a number of companies in the United States that have committed to stop producing, that used to be producers of landmines. Motorola is one that I mention often because it's well known. And the hope is that we'll manage to also um, mobilize enough um, pressure and, and, and um, uh, advocacy uh, within the business community to encourage the remaining companies to reconsider their production involvement. 
The continent of Africa is one special focus of this campaign, especially the country of Mozambique, where three decades of civil war have left an estimated one million anti-personnel landmines. They have especially been diabolical and damaging to children. In fact, some of them, in an insidious way, have been designed to look like toys. In Boston, Greg Wayland, New England Cable News. Born royalty and like Princess Diana before her, Queen Noor of Jordan is putting her prestige behind a deadly problem. She's teamed up with UNICEF New England to fight the spread of landmines around the world. Fox 25's Rosalind Jordan is here with more about that campaign and the Queen's involvement. Ros. David and Tori, the Queen says she took on the landmines issue after Diana's death, not because she could bring any celebrity luster to the cause, but because the Queen says that it's just isn't right that children literally must watch where they step. Please welcome the 1999 UNICEF New England Children's Champion Award recipient, Her Majesty Queen Noor of Jordan. Queen Noor of Jordan has spent years fighting for children's well-being. Now the widow of King Hussein is pushing for the safety of kids in 70 countries. The danger? Landmines. Because it's a fundamental responsibility that, that we all have. And so it, as daunting as it may be, one that can't turn make one complacent or accept uh, the um, status quo. Queen Noor concedes this won't be easy. It's thought it could take at least 1,100 years to remove all 100 million landmines now planted around the world. And that's only if every country agrees never to plant a new one. So far, 40 countries have vowed to do so, but the U.S. isn't one of them. UNICEF has taken, um, has grasped onto this issue simply because of the fact that the 30 to 40 percent of landmine injuries and fatalities um, occur uh, are, are children. With dozens of local students at her heels, Queen Noor makes a plea for a new millennium free of landmines, for a time where the earth gives life to flowers and food and freedom, where children from Kosovo to Cambodia to Mozambique will be able to walk without fear. Our little girl in Mozambique could grow up to be head of the United Nations. But first, we must give her the chance to grow up. Now, while the UNICEF New England campaign will focus on the landmines problem in Mozambique, organizers say their larger mission is to get all countries to stop making and using landmines. Queen Noor calls that a goal worth pursuing. David? All right, thanks, Roz. Well, we've all heard of Dolly the...